Hi everyone, it's the Calculady. Um, I'm sick at home, the doctor says I have bronchitis, so I'm hoping to get back into the classroom as soon as possible, but in the meantime, I knew some of you guys were struggling with a few of the assignments, got some emails, so I figured even though my voice isn't perfect, it is surely loud enough for a video. So um, we're sick at home and we're going to do some math, so let's do a few of these IXL assignments together. So we are looking at um, probability on IXL and um, assignments DD1 and DD2 are incredibly similar, so I'm going to push them together into this one video. Um, it, this first question says, a bag contains 15 marbles, of which six are red. What is the probability that a randomly selected marble will be red? So for any probability, I'm going to have this notation, capital P of event. And that's the probability of an event happening. So if I'm looking at this particular example, it'll be the probability of drawing a red marble. And all of my probability statements will look like a fraction with the desired outcome on top and the total outcomes on bottom. So in this case, the desired outcome is what is the probability that it will be red. So desired outcome would be red, which there are six of them. And the total outcomes are all of the marbles in the bag. There are 15. And so my answer is simply 6 over 15. So the probability of that red marble is 6 over 15. Okay, uh, we're going to skip a level just because those all look pretty similar. Um, this question says, Ruben made cookies for a bake sale. He made 10 cookies in the shape of a tree and 46 in other shapes. What is the probability that a randomly chosen cookie will be in the shape of a tree? So we have this notation, again, probability of tree in parentheses because that's the desired outcome. So we'll put the desired outcome of trees on top of this fraction. It looks like there are 10 cookies in the shape of a tree and 46 are in other shapes. So the tricky part about this problem is that 46 has to get contributed to the total with the 10 that are trees. So we have 46 that are not trees, 10 that are trees, which means that we have 56 total. So my fraction is going to look like 10 over 56. Usually that will be fine, but this is a reducible fraction, so we could divide it in half. So if we divided both of these by 2 to reduce this fraction, I would get 5 over 28. Perfect. Okay, we have one now with a table, and um, I like the idea of reading a table, so let's do this one and then we'll shift to the other assignment. So if I have several kinds of baked goods for sale, 7 slices of pie, 25 muffins, 3 slices of cake, two cupcakes, and two donuts. We're looking at the probability that a randomly selected baked good will be a slice of cake. So we have the slice of cake, which will go on top of this probability for cake. So the probability of picking cake will be three on the top of the fraction. And then the bottom of the fraction is just an addition problem to add all of the types of food together. So if I add that 25, three, two, seven, and 2, I'm going to get 39 on the bottom of that fraction. And again, this is reducible. I can divide both of these things by 3, and I will get 1 over 13. That is my reduced fraction, which I can type in here. Awesome. Okay, let's go to the um, second assignment, which is simple events and opposite events. So I'm a new piece of paper. Um, we have a spinner labeled 1 through 4. What is the probability of some, getting something that's not even? So on this t uh, diagram, I have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's four possible outcomes. So that'll go on the bottom of my fraction. And there are two even numbers and two not even numbers, or two odd numbers. So it'll just be a 2 out of 4, which reduced is 1 half. Uh, and they want it in percent form, so that'll be 50%. Okay. Um, what are the chances, probability, of rolling a number that is less than 3 on a 6-sided die? So I like to start with the bottom of the fraction a lot of the time just because 
tracking the total number of outcomes is often easier for me than tracking the desired outcomes. So the total number of outcomes on a six-sided die is just six because there are six numbers. And of those six numbers, only two of them are less than three, the one and the two. When it says less than three, it's not counting the three. It's only looking at the numbers that are distinctly less. So two out of six, again, we can reduce to one third. And they have that in reduced fraction form right here, one third. Great. What is the probability of uh, landing on heads? So probability of heads of a coin. And this will always be the same probability for coin tosses. It's just one, huh? Because there are two options, heads or tails, and one desired outcome landing on heads. Awesome. Let's jump up a level, see if we can go to some that are a little bit more difficult. Okay, so we have this spinner. And it looks like there's a little bit of a trick here because there are numbers 2 through 8, which actually means there are only 7 options. Um, 1 is not there, so the total number of options here is 7. And it's asking for the probability of any number that's not greater than 3. Not greater than 3. So it means it can be exactly 3 or less than 3. And it looks like the 2 and the 3 are both viable options there. So 2 and 3 both work, so I'll put 2, because that's two possible spaces, over 7, and it wants percent, so we'll put it into a calculator, and it looks like it's approximately 28.6%. Perfect. Okay, um, next one, again, kind of complicated. The problem here is the word factor. Um, so a factor of 8, we need to know what that word means before we can tackle this problem. A factor of 8, um, if I were to do a factor tree of the number 8, I could divide it into numbers that multiply together to equal 8. So I could do 4 and 2, and then I could keep going until I'm left with all, um, basically a single number and 1. So I have 2 and 1, this can be divided into 2 and 2, and then those can also be divided into twos and ones. So now that I have sets that have ones, those are all of the factors of eight. So if I can look at my factors on these cards, one, two, three, and four, it looks like the only one that is not a factor of eight is the number three. One, two, and four are in fact factors. So that means that of the four options, which would be the bottom of my fraction, I would have three of those options, the one, two, and the four, all work. So that would be a 75% chance that we will draw a factor of eight. Okay, and we'll do one last one. Um, not a divisor of 32. Again, divisor factor, we're looking at these numbers that can be um, split up. So for this six-sided die, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so which of those numbers go evenly into 32? 32 divided by one is 32. So that one works. 32 divided by two is 16. So that one works. 32 divided by three is going to be a decimal. So that one will not work. 32 divided by Four. Does that work? Yes, it does. It is eight, so that one works. 32 divided by five will be a decimal, so that won't work. And 32 divided by six will equal also a decimal, so that won't work. Okay, so it looks like we have half of our options that work as a divisor of 32, which means half don't work. So for our P not a divisor of 32, half of them are not, so that'll be 50%. Okay, well, Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you guys soon.